Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the second day of the International Workshop on Agritourism, and we are in the session for promoting traditional agriculture through agritourism. So we've got three back-to-back -back presentations, and we're going to build in Q&A time within each presentation. Um, if you're in the room physically today, please use the microphone to ask your questions so the folks online can hear the questions. And if you're online, please type in your question and the moderator can read it out loud. Now you can hear me. Great. Okay, so we're doing three back-to-back -back sessions and each session will have the question and answer time baked into the, that 20 minutes. If you're in the room and you want to ask a question, please use the microphone uh, in the middle of the room so the people online can hear. And if you're online, please... Um, type in your question and the moderator can ask the question out loud. Um, so the first session, the first presenter we have is Shpresim Domi. He's a researcher and lecturer in Albania, and he'll be speaking on the role of origin products and networking on agritourism performance, the case of Tuscany. Thanks. Thank you very much, Lindsay. Um, good morning to everyone. Uh, again, my name is Shpresim Domi. I'm from Albania, and this is the Albania, famous people, Mother Terry is a country, and it's a uh, small but uh, very touristic uh, and agriculture-based country. That's why I think that it has a great potential that it indeed is doing, is doing good on uh, developing agritourism. But it's not the case that I'm going to present today. I'm from Albania presenting a case for, for, for Italy here in Vermont. Quite interesting, that list. Well, um, specifically, I'm going to talk about the role of origin products, origin linked products, and networking, if they are important for um, successful management of, uh, of an agritourism. So it means that my study was specifically related in terms of or providing insights maybe uh, for those who are interested to know better, to manage better their, their own agritourism. And uh, we choose, because I'm co-author with Professor, professor Giovanni Belletti, professor, Italia, um, professor from the University of Florence in Italy. And we saw this, we investigated this issue on uh, Tuscany Key. Tuscany is one of the 21 region, biggest region in Italy, most famous one for agritourism, has the biggest number of uh, uh, of agritourism entities in Italy. Please. Um, this is uh, just to say that this was just published uh, on a very famous uh, journal, the scientific journal, our, our work, but go ahead. Um, just shortly to say that we, even this, even this, sec, uh, even this uh, international workshop after the uh, Congress, first Congress on 2018 in Bolzano, uh, still, there are people, researchers, scholars as well, pharmacists also, policymakers also, that are not quite clear what the agritourism is. But I think such events have significantly ha helped on clarifying and well guiding and better guiding farmers, policymakers, and investors about what is agritourism and how it should be. What is the in common point? It was that farmer is the core point of an agritourism. Otherwise, it shouldn't be an agritourism. Um, and uh, coming back to the to the research question, to the point about what I'm talking here is that we uh, so very interesting, even more in the case of Tuscany, because I will say something later why Tuscany is a good case for investigating origin link products and networking. We saw as interesting, even in terms of academic terms, because we made some literature review and found out that origin link products as a determinant for success or agritourism performance was not investigated. And networking was quite few investigated. Um, we found it, this in literature, academic literature. That's why we raised the question or the main purpose of this study was to investigate exactly the interplay effects of origin link products networking on agritourism performance. Uh, but this is quite academically one. I will skip very fast, but something I have to say that uh, we, we have to justify why we raised that research question because I consider the, the, the uh, I consider the plug theoretical framework who say that agriculture is not anymore concerned only on production. 
No, it should be concerned about environment. It should be concerned about uh, uh, other landscape, other natural resources, uh, other it's environment resource that where the agritourism is placed, where, where the farm is placed. This is called broadening. In this sense, we talk about agritourism, say, plug and rub. And then they say it also conventional agriculture shouldn't be concerned only in production, but also producing organic food, foods that are healthy and so on. So we talk about origin link products as we choose to investigate in our, uh, in our conceptual model. And they say it also that agriculture or farmer, typical farmer, shouldn't concern only in production, but she has to look around and com uh, communicate with the others because he, she, the farmer, could never produce everything that its customers want. They have to communicate with each other in buying to, to the neighbor farmer the products and then sell it or exchanging ideas or socially interacting and so on. So that's why you choose to investigate networking. Is networking important for agritourism success and so on? This was the conceptual framework or theoretical background we based on, uh, we based on to investigate. Yes, go ahead, please. Uh, and um, specifically related to the origin products and agritourism performance, what the relation there are, literature, literature shows that there is no previous studies doing this. And um, it was quite interesting to see that a lot of other studies has shown that the major reason why people go to the agritourism is food. Even more when the food is origin linked, is local food. Even I'm, I'm not talking about only food produced on its the raw material. No, I'm talking about even processed food, mainly a few steps processed food that it is done on the farm always. Uh, so origin products include all of them, not only raw material. I mean, so uh, studies that were showing that customers are willing to pay 10 to 50, uh, 50, uh, 20% more buying the products on the farm and picking up themselves than on the grocery, than on the, on the store close to their own home. Uh, so the farmer might benefit more doing agritourism, attracting people and selling the products, original products on its own farm. So this was something that we have to investigate it as well. Um, go ahead. And then, yes, uh, can a farmer produce all those kind of products that um, represent its area? Of course not. It, it is possible or an area produce, an area is, is uh, let's say, uh, it provides several origin like pro origin link products, but it it is not possible that only one farm might produce all of them. It's produced from other farmers, from other uh, producers, and so on. So the farm is the farmer, the owner of agritourism is is obliged to communicate with our other farmers in the area in order to complete its offer to the customers. Or furthermore, to uh, to exchange idea, to exchange information, uh, experiences, and so on. But the farmer needs also communicate with the tourism agencies. So it should it, it is necessary. It was seen as necessary to be part of a network with other farmers, municipality, tourism agency, uh, NGOs who provide uh, advising, extension services, and so on. It shouldn't be isolated the farm it should be part of a network but this is our question we investigated then and to see is there real, is really important for agritourism performance if this farm or or this agritourism is part of the networking economically let's see um, and then uh, we we investigated we went a step further and we saw uh, if a farmer produced origin link products or produce origin link products and offer origin link products to the to its customer he has to buy some as i said before uh from uh, other 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 producers uh and so on does the networking plays a role between the effect of origin link products on agritourism performance 
this is another question we raised, hypothesis, I mean, uh, go ahead, please. And finally, the, uh, play. finally, the conceptual model was this one. So we saw origin loan products, does it have origin, origin products effects on performance networking? And uh, uh, of course, then networking as a mediator between origin products and performance, because it, it, it is not possible to investigate factors that affect another factor or, or phenomena isolated. It should be considered part of a system. That's why we considered network. We consider, of course, some other, we control some other factors such as uh, age, uh, education, uh, location, and so on. Go ahead, please. Why Tuscany? Push it again. Because if we consider the definition by Tuscany law, if you see, uh, there is, again, again, please, there is mentioned the aspect of products. Oops, go back, please. It was the, yes, it is mentioned the local products is mentioned even in the definition of the law of the Tuscany and uh, networking integration between different stakeholders. So that's why we, th we thought it's good to investigate origin products and networking in Tuscany case because even the policymaker has identified as important origin products and networking. So go ahead, please. Uh, it is important to, it was good case Tuscany because Tuscany is most famous, as I was saying, most famous uh, region in Italy about agritourism. It has the biggest number of agritourism. 5,424 agritourism entities are officially recognized in Tuscany region. Five minutes, yeah. And uh, it has the low since 1987. It has a low, it's rich on local products officially registered in Italy, but most registered in European Commission, because Europe is, is organized in this way. It provides the opportunity to register uh, a product that is specifically identified within a territory, which means that that product is, it, ha it, it has features due to the climate, climate of that territory. It has features or is, is characteristic of that, uh, that territory because people has been traditionally producing and product itself has some features that are quite special compared to the others. Three components of classifying the origin products and registered. So go ahead, please. And then results. Uh, okay, just to show how uh, Toscana is, some figures, origin products, olive oil, cheese, landscape, beautiful. History is the place where Florence, which is the center of Toscany, is the place where originated the renaissance. So, and this one here is the, 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 the map of the Tuscany where uh, you can see the high density of networking. Strada del Vino, uh, are well known Strada del Vino, wine roads mostly, but not, not, not the only one. So networking is, an, is an a phenomenon in, uh, in, uh, in Tuscany. Go ahead, please. They are well advanced and so on. These are some figures to show the, the trends in agritourism uh, in Tuscany, uh, some of the activities that uh, agritourism in Tuscany provides and so on. Go ahead. Uh, yes, scientifically, we did some, we followed some steps on uh, respecting the methodology. This is technical dimension of the paper, so I will skip it, but we had an, a database, we composed a, a survey by based on uh, an instrument of a questionnaire. The survey was online. We received 292 res valid responses and so on. Some of the agritourism farmers profile, what is interesting to say the 50-50 almost uh, female and males as owners of agritourism. Go ahead, please. Uh, next, and then results shows that luckily, shows that yes, if a farm produce origin products with that features that I just said, uh, produce and offer, not only produce, because not always can produce everything, offer those that produce and those that buy to the neighbor farmers, yes, it is scientifically and significantly important for achieving economic uh, uh, objectives in terms of having more revenue. It means that those farms that do this, has higher revenues than those that do not. This is the case. So, and then, uh, yes, also networking is important. You have to be, I mean, as an uh, agripreneur, as the owner of agritourism, you have to be 
our results shows you have to be part of networking, communicate with tourism agencies, which brings you tourists. You have to communicate with the farmers, neighbors to buy from them some products that you can't produce. And uh, you have to be part of a system networking, I mean, more or less, because you will benefit more than those that do not such. And go ahead, please. And then uh, we found out that yes, you have to offer origin link products, but you also, on meantime, you have to be part of the networking if you want more benefits. So it means that networking plays, uh, plays partially uh, the role of mediation between the effect of origin products on agritourism performance. So it's not enough to be to produce and offer origin products. We have to be part of networking if you want more benefit, economic benefits. I mean, just simply say, and then go ahead, please. So final slide is that yes, yes, um, theoretical contribution, which is not more to, such a, is not too much important here, but just to say that this uh, for the first time this paper investigates the role of origin products on on agritourism performance and uh, uh, the networking uh, direct effect it direct its effect on agritourism performance and it made its its mediation role so more or less it is the innovative aspect of this paper but go ahead please um, and then yes it's very important for agri planners because if you see here scientifically a, prove that uh, origin link products are important, then you have to start producing more or making more intensively part of your offer, origin, origin link products. And nobody should be lazy on trying to communicate to each other, uh, to, to other stakeholders. I mean, I, don't, I know that we hate sometimes representatives of government, but we have to communicate with them in order to benefit more, to communicate with tourism agencies, because even tourism agencies are not so friendly. And uh, uh, yes, so this is the idea. It's the final one. Okay, thank you very much. Does anybody have a question? There's time for one question. When you're talking about product uh, of origin, are you talking of, uh, about products with a label from, you're talking a label? wine coming from Spain with a label saying that this product is certified as coming from Spain. Not only. No, no, no. Origin link products, it's a quite wide concept that includes those okay. which follows very strict national and international level in case of Italy, national Italy and then International European Commission provides this final level, uh, which are named uh, another, another Another way on named geographical indication products because indicate the geography and uh, PDO, PGI, as you say, those are in PG, PDO, P, PGI, and TSG are three categories that are officially provided, national and international. But there, in, in Italy, there are some other regional levels official, but there are also some products that are well known. Uh, by customers, but doesn't have any uh, legal protection, I mean, label, but are very well known, even in Albania, for example, I can show this one. Now in Albania, we are in process of finalizing the law that puts our origin link products on the same process as Italy is doing right now. Thank you. Is our next speaker here? For the framework for sustainable agritourism development in Zimbabwe. Okay. Yes, this speaker is uh, online. Okay, I'm a co-speaker. I can present on behalf of my uh, of the main speaker. Uh, if you can allow me to share my screen. Okay. 
I'll start by defining the term sustainable agritourism, which, in, which is an integration of two terms, sustainable development and agritourism. Uh, the term agritourism has been defined by Chase as, and, and others as the business of establishing farms, as destinations for education, hospitality, entertainment, recreation, and the purchase of farm products. So these are the activities that were proposed by Chase and others to be agritourism activities. And they can be core agritourism activities or they can be peripheral agritourism activities, according to Chase and others. And the core agritourism activities are those that occur on a working farm and are directly linked to agricultural production, whereas the peripheral agritourism activities may occur on a working farm or on a non-working farm and may not be directly related to agricultural production. And the term sustainability, which is often referred to as the triple bottom line approach, it uh, it, it emphasizes uh, the issue of the three P's, whereby the business of the the success of a business can be measured on the profit or the extent to which it is contributing to the well-being of the people, as well as the the well-being of the planet, which is the environment. So the researchers of this study combined these two terms to come up with the definition of sustainable agritourism, and they defined it as, a, as developing a working farm into a destination that offers on-farm experiences and product sales to visitors in a manner that leads to conservation of farm resources, economic growth, and equitable social development. So this uh, definition, it emphasizes the issue of a working farm the issue of on-farm experiences and product sales, as well as the issue of sustainability. The researchers were motivated to develop this framework out of the realization that agritourism is increasingly become an important strategy for diversification, and it has also become an important economic driver, as evidenced by the available literature, for example, um, statistics that were, were, were published uh, in a study conducted by Chase 2020, whereby the is literature on the, the contribution of agritourism to the economy in Vermont, as well as the contribution of agritourism to the economy of the United States of America. And there's also been a growing demand in farm-based experiences. And uh, agritourism, uh, it's been noted that it requires a low investment as it relies on already existing facilities such as farmhouses and other features that may be available at the farm, such as mountains, forests, rivers, dams. These facilities can be used to develop peripheral agritourism activities. The researchers also noted that many developing countries, according to the literature, are agro-based and have a great potential for tourism development, particularly Zimbabwe. Uh, but however, the underutilization of agritourism potential, uh, for example, Zimbabwe, it is agro-based and there are several farms that can be developed into agritourism farms, but this potential has not been fully uh, realized and Zimbabwe is still lagging behind in terms of agritourism development. The concept is still in its infancy, uh, regardless of the fact that the country is agro-based. So this motivated the researchers to develop this framework as, as part of efforts to promote the development of agritourism. So this framework will provide the guidelines and recommendations uh, for sustainable agritourism growth in the country. The main research objective uh, was to develop a framework for sustainable agritourism in Zimbabwe. And uh, the development of this framework was guided by three theoretical underpinnings. Uh, the first one being the critical success factors theory by Rogat 1979. This theory it highlights that there are few key areas that uh, farmers or managers of businesses need to concentrate on in order for them to attain organizational objective. And these key success factors, they range from five to 10 factors, and they can be arranged in a radical order. 
And the second theory is the stakeholder theory by Freeman 1984, which emphasizes the need to engage or to consult all the individuals that are in, uh, they've got interest in the operation of the organization. These individuals are those that are that can affect or are affected by the operations of the farm uh, or of the organization. The sustainability theory, uh, as I highlighted before, often referred to as the triple bottom line approach, which focuses on the three P's and emphasizes that the success of a business should not be measured on profit or loss alone, but also on the extent to which uh, the operations of the business contribute to the well-being of the local people, as well as to the well-being of the, of the environment. The researchers conducted a literature study in an effort to identify if there are other frameworks that have been developed in other study areas. And uh, the first conceptual framework that was uh, uh, identified in the literature is the conceptual framework for agri-food tourism by Liu et al. Uh, this uh, framework was developed in Taiwan. The institutional framework of the development of agri-tourism was developed in Greece. A conceptual framework for understanding agri-tourism in the United States of America was developed by Chase and others. An integrated demand and supply conceptual framework for agritourism services was developed in Italy by Brantano and others. A framework to assess agritourism's impact on agricultural literacy and consumer behavior towards local foods by Bruno and others in the United States of America. So the main aim of this literature study was to try and identify gaps, to try and uh, see what has been done as far as frameworks, the development of frameworks is concerned and what is lacking in the literature. And the authors noted that these frameworks that were identified in the literature were developed in areas or in regions with well-developed agritourism. And there is lack of a framework for those destinations that are still trying to develop agritourism, particularly countries like Zimbabwe and other developing countries. So there's been a lack of uh, a framework to guide the development of agritourism in these destinations. So that's the main gap that was identified by the researchers. Uh, and that's the gap this research is going to fill by developing a framework for sustainable agritourism development in Zimbabwe. The research adopted a qualitative uh, research approach and in-depth interviews were conducted with 59 stakeholders who were purposely selected from Manikaland and Mashonaland West Province of Zimbabwe. Observations were also conducted during the literature study and the data was collected from October 2020 to June 2021. The data analysis uh, was done using them thematic content analysis. Uh, the researchers identified themes during the literature study and the themes were emerged with the themes that emerged from the, uh, the, the findings from the field work. The result was the framework for sustainable agriculture development in Zimbabwe. The researchers uh, proposed that there are three major stages that are important in the development of agritourism in Zimbabwe. And these stages include a uh, planning stage, development stage, and the implementation stage. Uh, the themes that are, are highlighted in bold are the themes that were obtained from, from the literature and the Themes that are not in bold are those that were obtained from the field work. So during the field work, uh, the interviews with the key stakeholders, uh, it was indicated that there is need to conduct a pastel analysis in order to identify factors in the macroeconomic environment that may hinder or promote the development of agritourism. And there are certain factors that, that were mentioned by the key informants, the political instability, uh, the economic instability in the country, hyperinflation, and also the social uh, factors such as the mindset of the farmers and the farming communities, which does not uh, prioritize leisure or entertainment. And there's also the issue of the 99 year lease agreement, which was also highlighted by the key informants that it does not give the farmers the confidence to invest in the land. And during the literature study, the authors uh, noted that there are two, two main industry, key industries 
agriculture and tourism, they need to identify other stakeholders that can also play a role in the development of agritourism during the planning stage, and also identifying farms that have got potential for, for agritourism development. Because uh, during the field work, the researchers could not get statistics on the available, uh, the farms that are currently offering agritourism activities, as well as those that have got the potential. So there is need in the planning stage to identify those. And the identified farms should be assessed in terms of what is key uh, for agritourism to be developed. What are, what are the competitive advantages? The farm positioning, infrastructure that is available, that is needed, as well as the marketing requirements, all those need to be determined at the planning stage. And, and also uh, assessment of the farmer's competence and interest as well as perceptions. Because well, during the, the data collection process, the researchers noted that some farmers are not interested, although their farms have got potential, uh, but they are not interested in developing agritourism. And some have got a negative perception. They, they've got the perception that having visitors coming to the farm will pose security challenges. So it is also important during the planning stage to actually uh, uh, in, investigate or analyze or assess the, the competence and interests and perceptions of, of the farmers. The next step, which is the development stage, is uh, whereby we now have policy development. After the, identifying the key issues in the macroeconomic environment, there's needed to develop policies that address those key, those uh, factors that would have been identified during the planning stage. There's also need for development of multi-stakeholder approach, whereby we're saying the, all the key stakeholders that would have been identified in the planning stage, they should develop a, a multi-stakeholder approach whereby they come up with strategies to monitor and also to encourage the farmers to pursue farm diversification in terms of agritourism. And during all this, uh, there's need for effective communication between the stakeholders and the farmers. Because some farmers, they do not have uh, the, the information and they need to to actually get such information from the relevant key stakeholders, such as the Minister of uh, Lands, as well as the uh, Minister of, of Tourism, responsible for tourism. And it is during this uh, stakeholder approach, a multi-stakeholder approach that the farmers, the key stakeholders and the farmers may agree to pursue farm diversification. And there's need to develop the agricultural attractions that is the farmers, they need to be encouraged uh, to increase agricultural production. There is need to develop infrastructure to make the farms accessible. For some of the farms that have got potential, they are not easily accessible. There's also need to develop the agritourism products and also uh, develop the farmers in terms of their skills. Uh, during the, the, the data collection process, the researchers noted that some farmers do not have the know-how. They do not know what agritourism is about. They do not know how they can benefit from agritourism. So there is need to develop the farmer uh, in terms of their skills. And then they have the implementation stage whereby we're saying all the, the policies that would have been developed, they need to be implemented with uh, sustainability principles in mind. And there's also need to develop the multi-stakeholder approach into cooperations and associations. The key stakeholders, they should come together, form associations that will lead or that will pave way for agritourism development. And during this engagement, there's need also to, to, um, to conscientize uh, all the key stakeholders on what agritourism is, because the researchers also noted that there's conflict between the minister responsible for agriculture and the minister responsible for tourism uh, because of the misconception of what agritourism is about. Uh, the minister of uh, responsible for agriculture, some key informants have got a mindset that agritourism will pose a challenge to agricultural production, which is not the case because agritourism activities, they do not predominate agricultural activities, but it is the agriculture first, and then from this agriculture, we develop agritourism activities that are deeply connected to agriculture. So there is need to conscientize all the relevant 
uh, stakeholders. And after the formation of associations, they now see uh, agritourism development. And during uh, this development of agritourism, they need to emphasize on conservation of the environment as well as sustainable use of of resources, there is need for effective communication on sustainability issues. There is need to monitor to ensure that the sustainability principles are being adhered to. And the agritourism provider, after the development stage, we now have a, a, an agritourism provider who's got the expertise, the hospitality skills, and the entrepreneurial skills to run the agritourism farm. And our outcome is sustainable agritourism, whereby we're saying we should have conservation of bio diversity, we should see the agritourism activities uh, actually leading to improved quality of the farm environment. And also the agritourism activities should provide for uh, issues like creating jobs so that we've improved life loads for the farmer as well as the farming communities. And overall, we have a developed economy because of employment creation due to the development of agritourism. And this, the discussion basically will look at the contribution of the study. And this study is a first attempt to develop a framework for sustainable agritourism in Zimbabwe. The researchers noted that there is no literature on, or in the literature, there is no framework that was identified that uh, provide guidelines and recommendations for sustainable agritourism growth in the country. Therefore, this study is the first attempt to develop such a framework. Moreover, the framework, the framework integrates a key uh, three theoretical underpinnings, which are very critical. Uh, these are critical success factors concept, the sustainability concept, as well as the stakeholder engagement concept in agritourism development. This integration has never been done in agritourism research. Further, the framework integrates literature and more specific findings obtained from the food work. This made the framework more relevant and applicable to the study area. And the applicability of this framework to the study area is an indication that it can also be very useful to other provinces in the country, as well as other regions, especially those that are still uh, trying to develop agritourism. And uh, there's also a limitation uh, that is uh, uh, relevant to this study. The limitation of the framework was that its evaluation and its assessment was only done uh, in the study areas, and it was found to be applicable to the study areas uh, in Zimbabwe. So there is need to critique the value or the applicability of this framework beyond the study area. Uh, for future research, uh, the researchers are recommending that other researchers should try to crit critique this framework to see how applicable is it to other regions that are outside Zimbabwe. And in conclusion, the researchers concluded that this framework is very applicable to the study area and may be also be applicable to many less developed agritourism destinations. However, it is not a one size fits all. It may not apply to other regions, but uh, uh, the researchers developed the framework in such a manner that it is very flexible. It can be adjusted to suit environments in different regions. So therefore, uh, we are recommending or encouraging other researchers to actually try to, uh, to, to, uh, to critique this uh, framework, try to adjust it so that uh, they see if it is applicable in their environments. I've reached the end of my presentation. I thank you all for listening. I thank you all for awarding this, me this opportunity to make this presentation. This is my first time moderating for a virtual webinar, so thank you. <laughs> um, next up, we have Jose Luis Flores and Fonica Miedema. Um, they're speaking on the surprising resilience of domestic coffee and conservation tourism in Honduras. And we have Dave Chappelle, who will be translating for Jose Luis. Thank you. Uh, 
Ok. Sí. Cambiamos de lugar. Sí, vamos a hacer. Buenos días. Bueno. Pero vamos a hablar hoy de la resiliencia del café nacional, Honduras. Today we're going to talk about the resilience of coffee in Honduras. Y el turismo de conservación en áreas protegidas. In conservation, tourism, in protected areas. Oh, there we go. El próximo. Gracias. Eh, la situación de, de Honduras en el mundo, con respecto al café, eh, en el mundo son 25 millones de familias productoras de café en 80 países. In, uh, in the situation, this is about the situation of coffee in Honduras. In the world, there are 25 million uh, families that are producing coffee spread over 80 countries. We're sixth place in terms of production in the, production in the world. And seventh in terms of export. Honduras aporta el 3%. So uh, Honduras makes up 3% of the world coffee production. Okay. Yeah. En contexto nacional, son 7.7 millones de sacos que exporta Honduras. So there's 7.7 million bags that, of coffee that uh, Honduras exports every year. 3.5 millones son sacos de café convencional. 3.5 million are conventional coffee. And 4.2 are uh, a special uh, organic. Okay. And the other 4.2 million are uh, produced using environmentally friendly practices. So it could be organic or another uh, environmentally friendly practice. We're in first place in Central America as far as uh, production. And third place in all of Latin America. After Brazil and Colombia. Uh, so the, the uh, coffee in Honduras makes up 5% of the of GDP. 6% del producto interno bruto de lo que es el, el, la, la producción agrícola. And 25% of, of, of the GDP is made up of agricultural production. 30% de todas las fincas de café eh, están a una altura de 1.300, a mayor de, de 1.300 metros sobre el nivel del mar. 30% of the farms that are producing coffee in Honduras are over 1,300 uh, meters above sea level, so roughly 5,000 5, feet. Café de altura, de estricta, de estricta uh, 60%? Okay. Really? 30%. Oh, 30%. So 30%. So that's, that's what's uh, considered a high elevation coffee. And I think I said 5,000 feet, it so should be roughly 4,000. And then 60% is what's called, uh, you know, uh, elevation coffee. So it's like the next level down. Which is also a high, a high uh, quality coffee. And then about 10% are uh, under 900 uh, meters above sea level. So that's like standard coffee. Son de 102 a 120,000 families that are involved in the production of coffee in Honduras. 102,000? 102,000. 102,000. What did I say? Oh, 102 to 120,000 is what he said. Yeah. Yeah. Adelante. 
pero no todo ha sido favorable para los productores de café. Han tenido algunos problemas en cuanto al cambio climático. Eh, esto ha causado también una proliferación de plagas y enfermedades. Eh, so everything hasn't gone well for uh, copper duo producers in, in Honduras uh, due to climate change. There have been a number of uh, different uh, diseases that have affected the production. Uh, high production costs, uh, increased uh, cost to uh, inputs. Uh, so there's uh, problems with the world uh, international level of uh, coffee production, uh, coffee prices, excuse me. Uh, the problem is that when uh, prices are high, um, at, the, at that point, when the prices are raised, the producers have already sold their product. So the person, the people that are making it, taking advantage of that are the people, the intermediaries that are moving product. And the uh, producers have uh, trouble accessing uh, financing uh, for production. Uh, so the environmental friendly practices have um, ha uh, are allowing them to. Uh, Okay, so agricultural systems, like agroforestry, uh, cover, uh, soil cover, and uh, conservation of soils. Uh, uh, strengthening human resources uh, to improve the farms. They're also looking at different uh, diversified uh, sources of income, uh, such as agritourism, which we're talking about today. A través de sus fincas demostrativas y las escuelas de campo con productores eh, que están en la zona de influencia. Uh, for example, uh, uh, in um, demonstration farms that are within uh, this area of influence. Y también se aprovecha el enfoque a lo que es eh, el área protegida, la protección al área protegida. And then also focusing on the protected areas. So Honduras has six different coffee producing regions. And there's also uh, the, the, it's being promoted in the country as far as uh, the coffee routes, as far as a uh, tourism option. So it's cool. what's what they're promoting as the coffee route within Honduras. Um, Jose Luis works in, in Mapanse. Uh, Mapanse is a community organization that works within a protected area, um, which is on the route. This also exists within a biosphere, protected biosphere, which offers them more opportunities to, for promotion. Uh, 
so this coffee route as has um out of the, out of the coffee route has come different opportunities for producers especially those which have some sort of infrastructure already in place to receive receive visitors for example people who have coffee shops within uh, urban areas so that would be for more like a medium or larger producer, but they're looking for more opportunities for small producers. So we're trying to uh, promote them, uh, pr uh, use more environmentally friendly practices on these smaller farms to uh, include them in the coffee route. Eh, igual, hay una oferta de turismo eh, en el Parque Nacional de Celaque como un turismo de, de, de conservación, un turismo, eh, un paisajismo, donde tenemos la parte más alta de Honduras. Uh, this is, uh... In this region where they're working is Salaki Mountain, which is the largest mountain in Honduras, the tallest mountain in Honduras, and they're also they're able to capitalize on this conservation effort and the beauty of this area. Uh, 2,849 meters over sea level, it's the highest point in Honduras. They have a great uh, biodiversity there. There's 287 uh, bird species that are registered within the park. That's just showing the actual uh, region that they are. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sí. Bueno, eh, estas oportunidades no solamente se dan en café, sino también en las prácticas agrícolas que, que hacen los productores en su finca, eh, en las cuales también procesan otros cultivos como la caña, como las hortalizas. Entonces esas también son oportunidades para, para los turistas. Oh, aquí tenemos... Eh, Eh, digamos la artesanía también son otros productos y hay un hay una relación interactiva con el con el turista ellos pueden participar también en la en el en la fabricación o en los procesos de producción so you just spoke specifically about coffee right here in this in this talk but he said they're also looking at expanding this into other forms of agriculture such as uh, sugarcane production or different uh, uh, regional um, handicrafts so people would be able to come to visit the area, participate in the agricultural process and produce, um, produce goods. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so, so the idea would be that they would go to visit these farms and then be able to return to an urban area where they'd be able to stay um, and uh, eat. Right. Hello, everybody. Good, uh, good morning. I'm waiting for my first slide. Um, I just start talking already about. Um, so I started uh, my hotel. That, no, no, no. It, it was the one you showed before all the time. I have a hotel and a restaurant in Gracias Lempira, a small historical town in the west of Honduras. Uh, exactly where Jose Luis is working, and there we are. So I started the business 29 years ago, thinking in international travelers, beautiful area, a lot of opportunities, potential, you know, and it was going very well. And then suddenly you got political instability, you get uh, a changed perception of the safety, 
and you know you need to reinvent um, your whole perspective again. Next one. So luckily for Gracias, in that same moment, a lot of things happened, contributed. Uh, the access road was paved, and you know, in the same moment, actually, when international tourism went down, domestic tourism became very trendy for different reasons. You know, the big cities, people started to long for nostalgia, for traditional cuisine. People were looking for areas where they could just walk around on the street, feel safe, go to the parks, go to the markets. And you know, in the smaller cities, we, had, we could offer that. And there was a need to connect back with nature. You know, people have children, they grow up in cities, they don't know anything about rural areas or a tree or production. They needed to connect with nature again. Next one. So in the process, Gracias became a tourist town. That's Gracias, that's our city. Next, uh, please. Um, things happened, you know, uh, there was a lot of improvement in um, infrastructure, in the attractions, the his historical center was restored. We had the Spanish uh, government involved. Next one. Uh, we had USAID involved, they trained guides, you know, the National Park became um, a big tourist attraction, bird watching, the coffee route was invented, um, everything was happening. Next one. So the Chamber of Tourism, I'm an active member of the Chamber of Tourism, I've been the president for a while, and, you know, we became very... Uh, aware that we needed to do a lot of things ourselves to get people to our destination. And if there's no international tourist, you go to the domestic tourists, you know? So we organized events, we organized festivals. Next one. We made a, a logo. We had a fan page, you know, the good thing is we have some young people with businesses and they're very good on those things because it's not my strength, you know, but we have some very dynamic one. Actually, one is a marketing specialist who started the restaurant. So he's, he's, he, he gets a lot of credit for this. Excellent. So if we talk about rebuilding tourism in mainland Honduras, um, Gracias, the city of Gracias was one of the first tourist destination to quickly adapt to national demand. Recognizing the need for leisure activities in a safe environment. Catering to the nostalgic for traditional cuisine by revalidating certain dishes. Offering tours to the highest peak of the country. Offering tours to the local farms and coffee fincas. Our festivals and events year round attract national tourists from the major cities in a way that people like to come back and repeat the experiences time after time. You know, actually this is, we, we just things sometimes happen. We had this, this, a friend of mine, he said, oh, we should do some cultural festival. So he organized this huge cultural festival. Actually, there were a lot of international artists there, you know, people that, uh, a lot about literature, poets, and uh, suddenly this sleepy little town became the cultural capital of Honduras, you know, and that, that was kind of an amazing, we, this, is the, this year was the ninth, ninth year, and then the same guy started to organize a poetry festival, you know, and so we got exhibitions and poetries and, and people come from all over the world actually to this. Next one. So the agritourism is still a very new, new thing in, in, in the area, but everything is ready for it. And you know, by including local producers and small server providers like our eateries and artisans, money is more evenly spread and tourism is providing additional income to many people. As you can see, you know, whenever we have activities, uh, people can put up their stands and that's also a way of contributing to agritourism. Thank you.